When we look at the fossil record that we have of our ancestors, there's a, a big group known as the Australopithecines, and they are usually considered to be the ancestral um, type of, um, or, and possibly one of the Australopithecines would be an ancestor for later hominids. And Australopithecus afarensis has always been considered to be the common ancestor of, of all the diversity that you see later. But I think maybe the Australopithecines were possibly an early group that in fact didn't go anywhere. And maybe again, we haven't found the group that actually represents the ancestors of, of, of ourselves. And as I say, we, we, we sample such a small sp sample in the fossil record. We don't have everything that ever exists. And I think the more that we find, the more we will realize that there are other possibilities out there. And so I wouldn't like to say myself, what is the direct ancestor? What is the, which of these is the most likely? The Australopithecines are more likely than the Paranthropines, for example. But it's not clear that Australopithecus is ancestral to Homo even or even where Homo came from. And so I think we, we just don't know at the, at the present time. And if you look back into when you get to Ardipithecus ramidus, or Aurorin tugenensis, or any of these early forms, Anamensis, Afarensis, we simply cannot say. So when somebody asks me to draw a family tree, I say, no, I won't do that. Because if you draw a family tree with lines going from one to the other, you're implying that you know something that you actually don't know. And so I say that this group looks like this, this group looks like this, but we don't know which group went to us. We, we just don't know. There are certainly a lot of unresolved challenges in this area. But since we are human beings, we won't be able to resist the temptation of investigating and learning all about the details of our genealogy, even if it is no simple matter, given the scant information we have at our disposal. Why did we become human beings? And more importantly, how did we become human beings? It's possible that it was all just a big coincidence. But we know that we exist thanks to a detailed evolutionary process that started with Australopithecus over four million years ago. Our runty ancestor with ape-like teeth began the revolutionary practice of walking upright. And because of this, they freed their hands and in the bargain established favorably appropriate conditions for the rapid development of their brains. The rapid development of the brain established a qualitative difference between this species and other earlier hominids. Though the volume of this brain wasn't even half of a present-day human brain, the difference was enough to mark the moment when Australopithecus took the step towards becoming another genus, the Homo genus, to which humans belong. What made these beings more human was that they made frequent and precise use of stone tools. Hominids began to use primitive tools some two and a half million years ago. The skillful Homo habilis was the only one of them to survive. All the other hominid species disappeared somewhere along the winding paths of evolution. By about 1,700,000 years ago, Homo habilis had evolved enough to merit another name, Homo erectus. They received this name because when they were found, paleontologists thought they were the first to walk erect.
At some point in time, this skillful hominid who made tools walked upright and probably competed against and put an end to all the other intelligent species in existence then, decided to leave Africa and conquer the world. Human beings discovered the concept of migration some two million years ago. The adaptive success of Homo erectus resulted in its expanding little by little until they had occupied the entire expanse of their original habitat. Then they covered northeastern Africa and eventually populated what is the present day Near East. It wasn't long before they spread towards Asia. Fossils and tools have been found in such faraway places as China, the island of Java, and of course Europe. In all these places, there were evolutionary lines that were more or less similar and which were not always able to overcome the increasingly difficult demands of natural selection. Some of those lines perished and others survived. The ones that survived were the hominid groups that were most adept at using tools and therefore more intelligent. All of these waves of migrating hominids consisted of small groups which despite the fact that they used tools and brandished rudimentary weapons for hunting had not yet developed the sufficient sophistication of a hierarchical society per se. These early hominid groups began migrating away from their original areas about two million years ago and did not stop migrating until about 50,000 years ago. All of them had essentially the same characteristics but over time would develop unique traits as well. With each evolutionary step, the genealogy of mankind was becoming more and more complex. At present, humans are the only intelligent species on Earth, but that was not always the case. From the moment hominids started evolving in Africa, there were many species that exhibited what we tend to call intelligence. Some of them became extinct. In their place, other species appeared. Some species shared the same territory, and it is generally thought likely that the best prepared species wiped out their weaker competition. This was very possibly the case of Afarensis and Ramidus about four million years ago. And more recently, between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, which occurred just 40,000 years ago. In fact, that was probably the last time one intelligent species wiped out another intelligent species. We do not know if these conflicts were solved in battle or by means of subtler struggles fought for supremacy over territory or scarce resources. Fossil studies have yet to determine whether Homo sapiens actually deliberately killed Neanderthals or if they were simply more skilled in controlling their environment thanks to more sophisticated technology. From among all these evolutionary hypotheses, no direct line yet links modern man irrefutably with early hominids. In fact, human evolution looks more like a whimsical maze of paths that we do not fully understand. The Atapuerca Mountains, some 15 kilometers east of the Spanish city of Burgos. This was on the medieval way of Santiago, which brought pilgrims from all over Europe to the Galician burial place of St. James the Elder, and also the site where Europe's oldest vestiges of early human communities are. In this land, some 800,000 years ago, there lived a distant relative of ours, something like a great grand uncle of present-day humans. The site's discoverers called this relative of ours Homo antecessor, or predecessor. 
Up until the discovery of Homo antecessor in the fossil field of Grand Lima, we had the idea that Europe was a continent populated much more recently than Asia, and of course Africa, the cradle of mankind. It was thought that human beings had not settled in Europe until about a half a million years ago. Neanderthals and humans are closely related species, practically kin, but which began to significantly differentiate at some point in time. Atapuerca has also proved that our evolution became independent around half a million years ago. The Grand Lima 